Hello and welcome to the first 3.3 video, uh, the beta. Uh, the beta just is on the website. Uh, the emails are going out today, so I am very last minute setting up a video to talk about Snowflake. Uh, if you're not familiar with Snowflake, uh, Snowflake's a data lake. Uh, it runs natively in Azure AWS environments. Uh, IT departments have been using it for a long time uh, to efficiently manage, merge, manipulate IT data. And OT groups are really interested in leveraging it as well to take on OT data. So from the OT perspective, you can think of Snowflake kind of as like a giant SQL interface in the cloud. Now that's a very, it's trivializing it. That's not completely accurate from our perspective though. It's somewhat useful. Um, so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you our new Snowflake connector that's in the beta. It supports outputting data to Snowflake using the new Snowflake streaming API. And I'll just kind of show you how that works. Now, historically, we've been able to get data into Snowflake uh, through a few different means. Uh, Snowflake has a Kafka ingest which works in a very similar way, um, end result anyway, to what we're showing now. Uh, so if you have a Kafka infrastructure, that might be a better solution. Uh, it supports a JDBC driver, so you could always load that JDBC driver into Hibite and integrate with Snowflake through uh, SQL-like commands, both reads and writes. And then it also has for mass data ingest, uh, upload through S3 or blob storage. So you can put CSV files or Parquet files in those areas of, of you know, various sizes, usually probably over 100 meg in size, and then trigger Snowflake to come in and reach in and then ingest those those data points. Personally, I think this is the best way to do it. It's the fastest way to do it. It's the easy button, but there are some limitations. So Snowflake, Snowpipe streaming uh, supports 16 meg payload sizes. So it's meant for, you know, smaller data sets. Uh, that's per request, but it can scale up to a gigasecond ingest. So it is still quite a bit. I think the only case where I wouldn't use this is I'm, I'm doing historical queries of historical uh, Storian data, I'm trying to pull that in. I think the S3 blob approach is probably better. But having done all of those integrations, this one you can get up in minutes. So it might be a good good place to start. All right, so with that frame, uh, let's jump in. So I'm going to create a new connector called Snowflake. And you'll see there it is in our connection list. Uh, the first thing you're going to need is an account identifier. So if you jump into the Snowflake uh, and log into your account, uh, for me, uh, it's this, this here. And our user guide kind of covers some of this. You'll need a role that has permission in Snowflake to connect. Uh, for me, if you go under Admin Users, uh, it's the Snowflake Partner Account. Paste that in there. Uh, so that's the user. That, that user needs a role. Now, my role is going to be Account Admin. This is probably not best practice. Uh, technically, all this role needs to be able to do is query for tables or create tables if you want to use that option in uh, Snowflake and then also use the streaming API to ingest data. So you just need those um, those roles. But I'm going to have account admin just so I can do everything in, this, in the demo. Uh, you need a private key. So we're going to authenticate not with a password or, use, or just username, a private key. So inside our user guide, we do have a link to the Snowflake documentation on how to generate that key. And then you just need to upload that through our certificate store um, here, which I won't record that in the video, and then just select it. Uh, you need the database. So if I jump into worksheets and look at my data, you can see I have a high byte database that I'm going to be writing to. Schema, in my case, I think in most cases is public. And then the last piece you need is a warehouse. So if I jump back out to um, the admin section, and we go to warehouses. I believe this is just where the compute occurs if you're doing store procedures or other um, compute intensive things. And so I'm just going to use my default one. And I'm going to turn that on. Uh, so those are the settings. Now what I'm going to do is go to outputs. And this is where I say it's, it's SQLite. So I'm going to do uh, packer lines and I'm going to create a table called packer lines. And I'm going to have the create option on. And what this is going to do is going to go out, look for that table in Snowflake. If it doesn't exist, it'll create it based on the schema of the data and then start writing to that table. So right now, if we jump back into Snowflake and we pull up uh, a worksheet to write a query, you can see I've, I was practicing the demo. Select everything from Packer Lines. This is where I say it's SQL-like. See, that doesn't exist. So what I'm going to do is um, save this real quick. And before I start of the demo, I created an instance of Packer Lines. And this is a templated instance that just creates three Packer Lines. It takes the data from OPC, then it has a sub-model sub called the Packer Motor. If you read this, you'll see it's three rows of data according to that schema. And what we're going to do, 
So we're just going to jump into that Snowflake connector, and we're just going to write that out. So instances Packer. And the first write is going to go out, look for that table called Packer Lines. It's not going to find it, so then it's going to create that table. So it takes you know a few seconds to make those JDBC calls. But as soon as that's done, you'll see that data is landed. Everything that's a first level attribute that just has a value, you can see that value was created as is. Anything that was lower level, like the child object, we write it out as JSON uh, in, in this version. So Snowflake can handle JSON natively. So you could write store procedures to unpack this. We have customers doing that. Um, and it's pretty efficient. So that's the default behavior. If you do want to flatten this out, although it's not in the beta, uh, when I did the demo, I noticed it was not in the beta, uh, we'll have a flatten, flatten uh, option uh, like we do on most connections. And what that'll do is take, take that hierarchy and flatten it out so you'll get you know motor underscore RPM uh, kind of thing to flatten it. Uh, so that's pretty much it. And then if, if I go back to that output and I just do another quick write, just to show you, it'll write you know three more lines, and that one took eight milliseconds, right? So now we're in the streaming API, no more JDBC calls. It's uh, very fast, and there it is. So easily taking that data, you know, modeling it, getting it into Snowflake. So aside from you know the output support and that flatten mode uh, for the release, we'll also have input support, and what that's going to look like is there'll actually be two Snowflake connection types. There'll be a JDBC or SQL connection type, which will support browsing, you know, inputs outputs all using SQL and then there'll be the streaming one that I just showed you that's only outputs just for streaming data and that way you can transactionally read data back into Hybyte and support those data flows as well. The only catch with the streaming API, Snowpipe streaming, is it is 16 megs per request and if you see that limit you'll get errors back. So in most cases you're probably fine but if you do need to buffer or split up the data uh, I'd recommend you use a pipeline. So the output connection is going to do nothing to try to chunk the data up accordingly just because we don't know where those breakup margins should be. Uh, but you could use a pipeline to easily kind of break up arrays into sizable chunks and then send those one by one out um, to the Snowflake connection and that, that should work fine. And that's it. I'm in a new environment. Recorded from home today, the office uh, heat is broken and we're in Portland, Maine. So they're fixing it. Uh, but I didn't want to record this video with a winter puff jacket on. So I figured home was a better spot. So hopefully that was useful. Uh, we're really excited. I think a lot of possibilities with Snowflake, uh, a lot of interest. Uh, and this really is the easy button for getting data into Snowflake. It's pretty cool. Uh, so give it a shot. It's in the beta. And uh, let us know. Give us your feedback.